Now that we've finished discussing covered calls, I also want to talk about cash secured puts, which are really in the same category because cash secured puts have the exact same risk reward as a covered call. Now, one of the questions I'm always getting is why are these two option and stock positions equivalent? Well, the reason is because of put call parity. So I wanted to take a lecture just to talk about put call parity. It's an approximation, but it's an important approximation. And um, we can see here sort of the, the definition of it is the, uh, uh, the price of a call plus the strike price divided by some time component, which we're going to actually uh, get rid of, is equal to the stock price, the price of the underlying, plus the price of the put. Now, this strike price here is has to be the same for both the call and the put. So the call and the put have to have the same strike price. Now, what we're going to do to make this really easy is we're going to assume that the uh, that interest rates are very low, and they have been for a while. And so if, if interest rates are very low, uh, well, I should probably, then if interest rates are very low, then this R gets very close to being zero. And so what you have in the denominator here is basically one to some time power. And so what that's going to allow us to do is basically to eliminate this, uh, this piece and come up with a simplification, which will just be the price of the call plus the strike price of the put in the call is equal to the price of the underlying stock plus the price of the put. Now, why is this true? Well, this is basically true because, uh, because of arbitrage. And so what someone can do is they can go into the market and if this gets out of whack, they can put on a position. They can buy the calls, they can buy the puts, they can delta hedge in the underlying stock. We still need to talk about delta, delta hedging. But this, is a, this formula works fairly well in the real world. Now, it, it, does, it does use some underlying um, assumptions. And so the basic underlying assumptions for put call parity is that the risk-free rate, uh, well, in the formula I showed you, there is a risk-free rate. Uh, which is what R is, we're just going to assume it's zero. And we're also going to assume, as put call parity does, that the stock does not pay any dividends. Now, the other assumption behind put call parity is that the options, the call options and put options that we're talking about are what are called European options. Now, European option is just an option that cannot be exercised before uh, expiration. Now, in the U.S., and on most markets, we're really going to be dealing mostly with American options, as you as you know. And these are options that can be exercised before expiration. Obviously, you can be assigned if you're short a put. If you're short a call, you can be assigned uh, before expiration. And so in the U.S., we're usually dealing with American options. But one of the assumptions of put-call parity is that you're dealing with European options. So you'll see sometimes the numbers are a little bit off. Uh, but I still think it's an important concept, even if it doesn't work... Uh, precisely in the real world. Now, there would be a version of this formula that would work in the real world. And uh, there's probably an adjustment of this for American options. There's an adjustment of it that uh, takes into account dividend yields. And I'm going to give you a, an approximation for that later. But things basically get very complicated once you do that. So we're going to do this, this assumption. We're going to assume that the risk-free rate is very close to zero. And uh, so we end up with this nice uh, version of C plus X equals S plus P. And that's what we basically, we basically have here. The price of the call plus the strike price is equal to the price of the underlying stock plus the put price. Now, uh, if we assume as we did that inter interest rates are zero and that uh, dividend yields are also zero for the stock. So this would work for a stock like uh, Amazon or Netflix, which currently don't pay dividends. What this means is that we can rearrange the, uh, we can rearrange this formula. So let me go to a, a page where I can, where I can draw. So basically, if we're going to, uh, if C plus X equals S plus P, we can uh, do some very simple algebra to rearrange this. So for example, let's say that we move uh, this P onto the other side, in which case we're gonna get uh, C plus X minus P equals the price of the underlying stock. 
Now, uh, let's go back and, and look at the various arrangements of this. Now, this is this is a little bit uh, it's a little bit misleading because what we're actually dealing with here when we say the price of the underline is we're actually dealing with a forward contract that is collateralized by some cash, which would be X at the strike price. Uh, but I, I want to ignore that and just give you a much more simplified version of this. And so basically, if we rearrange that formula, we can end up with things like S equals C minus P. Now, what does this mean? This is what we talked about in a previous lecture where we had a synthetic long stock position. So you can create a synthetic long stock position just by going long or call and short to put at the same strike price. Likewise, as we talked about in a previous lecture, you can create a synthetic short stock position by uh, going short a call and long a put at the same strike price. But what you may not realize is that there's some other variations of this. So let's think about this. How would we create a long call? Well, it's like being long a stock and long a put because a call has a fixed risk and unlimited reward. Well, likewise, if, you have a long, if you're long a stock and you've hedged it by being long a put, maybe an at the money put, then the uh, position you, ha you have has the same characteristics as a long call position. So I like, I like this formula just because you, know, you ignore that X piece for the most part, and uh, it allows you to sort of algebraically figure out how to create a synthetic long call, a synthetic long stock, synthetic short stock. So likewise, if we want to be short a call, it's very much like being short stock, uh, short underlying shares of the stock, and then short a put. Uh, long, if you want to be long a put, if you want to create a synthetic long put, it's like shorting the stock and being long a call. And finally, if you want to be create a synthetic short put, you can be long the stock and short a call. Well, what does it mean to be long a stock and short a call? Well, that's just like a covered call. And so we can see algebraically here how a covered call position is equal to a short put position. Now, I understand this is a little bit of hand waving, but I think it's still uh, a helpful mnemonic trick. And if you're going to trade options, you have to understand uh, or at least have a feel for put call parity. So let's let's go take a look at our uh, op option price calculator. And we're going to look at a stock where the underlying price is 100 the strike price is right at the money, 90 days to expiration. And then to make it really simple for put call parity, we're going to assume interest rates are zero, dividend yield is zero, and implied vol for the options is 20. Well, this is very interesting. Look what the option uh, pricing calculator does. It tells us the price of a call option is 3.96, and the price of a put option is 3.96. And so if we use our kind of fundamental identity here, C, the price of the call option plus the strike, equals the price of the stock plus the put option, we can see that's true. Uh, the price of a call option is 396 plus the, the strike price or the exercise price is 100. Uh, that would be um, 103.96. That's equal to the price of the stock, 100, plus the price of a put, 396. So in both cases, we get 103.96. So that, that'd be the simplest example here. Now let's look at a little more complicated example where the un underlying price of the stock is 95 and the strike price is a little bit out of the money uh, for the call at least. Again, 90 days to expiration, interest rates are zero, dividend yield is zero, implied vol is 20. Well, in this case, we find that the identity holds as well. Uh, C plus X equals S plus P. So the price of the call, 1.865 plus the strike price, 100, that gets you 101, 0.865 is equal to the underlying price of the stock, 95, plus 6.865. That also gets you to 101.865. So uh, we find that this, this identity is true uh, for under these assumptions. And again, um, we're assuming that these are, for put call parity, we're assuming they're European options. Uh, and we're assuming interest rates are zero, dividend yield is zero. Though, if you're using American options, it's, it, it gets you pretty close. So those are two sort of standard examples. Uh, now, what happens if, uh, I want to give you sort of a shortcut here, if, uh, if your stock does have a dividend yield, kind of uh, a shortcut that you can use just to kind of eyeball stuff. So assuming interest rates are close to zero or at zero, 
and assuming your stock does play, pay a dividend. Now, in most cases, again, these options are going to be American options. They're going to be exercisable uh, before expiration. Uh, but the, the underlying formula assumes they're European options. So we're going to see that the numbers are a little bit off, but I think this is still a nice ballpark formula to have in your head. So when interest rates are close to zero and the stock's paying a dividend, put call parity looks something like this. The price of the stock is equal to the strike price of the put and the call plus the dividend payable over that time period uh, through uh, up until the expiration of those options plus the call price minus the put price. Now we can see that this simplifies as you would expect uh, when the dividend is equal to zero, it simplifies to stock price equals strike price plus zero, zero dividend, plus call price minus put price. In other words, S equals X plus C minus P. And if we move that C over to the other side, we can see that S uh, minus C equals X minus uh, P. And so let's think about what that means. Well, S minus C, you're long the stock and you're short a call, that sounds a lot like uh, a covered call, is equal to X, which in this case would be the cash, uh, the amount of uh, cash you need to have at that strike price to be able to purchase the, the, the stock at the strike price, minus a put, short a put. So we can see here that this simplifies to uh, a covered call is equal to a cash secured put. Uh, S minus C equals X minus P. And again, stock uh, plus a short call is a covered call. Cash plus a short put is a cash secured put. And so this is this is one another way of showing that a covered call has the same payoff as a cash secured put. We're going to talk about cash secured puts in the uh, next lecture. But before we do, I wanted to leave you with one last example from the option pricing calculator. So as we said, uh, an approximation when interest rates are very close to zero and your stock, you have a stock that's paying a dividend. Again, these are European options. Uh, and so we'll see that it's a little bit off. Um, but for uh, a dividend paying stock, the stock price is going to be equal to the strike price plus the dividend payable over that period plus the price of a call minus the price of a put. And again, these, this call and this put are both at the same strike price. We're basically looking at the same formula uh, that we were uh, right here. Stock price equals strike price plus dividend minus call. Uh, I'm sorry. Stock price equals strike price plus dividend plus call price minus put price. That's the formula I'm showing right here. S equals X plus D plus C minus P. So let's see how that works in this case. So again, we have a stock uh, trading at 100. We have at the money put in calls right at 100 is the strike price. I made it really easy, 365 days to expiration or one year. Dividend yield of 4%, so basically pay, paying a dollar every quarter. Implied vol is 20, as in all these examples. So let's see if this works. Uh, the underlying price, which is equal to 100. 100 equals the strike price, 100. So let's just start, uh, we'll start writing it over here. 100 plus the dividend yield which as we saw is four, plus the price of a call, which we saw is six, minus the price of a put, which we can see here is 9.93. Now we can see this is probably because, uh, I'm not sure if this calculator is using European or I imagine it's using American options. Uh, so we can just see by eyeballing this. So again, the full formula would be the stock price is equal, that should be 100 there, uh, the stock price is equal to the strike price plus the dividend plus the call price minus the put price. We can see that this is roughly, uh, well, this is exactly 110 here, and then we're subtracting almost uh, 10 points here. It's off by seven cents, you can see. That probably has to do with the the uh, European versus versus uh, uh, American uh, options. But we can see basically 100 is equal to 110 minus 10. So this is a good reality check when you're trading options. Again, we've made some some simplifications here. And um, but it's it's just good to have in your mind that uh, the call price plus the strike price. And you can use, you know, if you want to use R&T, you could use, uh, for the risk-free rate, 
here you can use the risk-free rate over the time period so if you're looking if the time period here in years if you're looking at a one-year option then you'd want to use uh, like the one-year t-bill for example here the one-year t-bill if you're using just uh, you know a half a year or let's say a quarter of a year let's say you're using a quarter of a year this t then is going to be 0 0.25 and you're using a quarter of a year, in which case uh, that's three months. So for the risk-free rate, you want to use the three-month uh, T-bill. Uh, but the real, the real takeaway is you're probably not going to use this. There is an arbitrage that's possible in the markets, and this is why put call parity uh, basically, basically holds, because you have big institutional traders that will be buying and selling their calls, and uh, buying and selling the stock, and buying and selling uh, the puts to make sure this holds. And again, they're using much more complicated formulas that take into account uh, where the risk-free rate is and where the dividend yield is and the actual timed expiration, the fact that they're American options. And so there is an arbitrage that's going on here that you should be aware of. But this is not something that's available to the retail trader. You need giant amounts of money uh, to do this. And I don't think even people who do it now make a whole lot of money. But the real, the two takeaways I want you to take away from this is basically C plus X equals S plus P. And also, if we want to add the, uh, the dividend piece to that, we could say, uh, you know, the dividend plus the uh, strike price plus the call price. And then we'll take this P and just move it to the other side of the equation minus p minus the put price is equal to the stock price so that would be the dividend form of the uh of the put call parity so something to keep in mind it's most helpful i think uh you know you can remember that it's an approximation it's not something you're ever going to be arbing but if you ever need to think through uh what's a long call what's a uh, what's a long you know a short call a synthetic long synthetic short stock a uh, covered call being equal to a cash secured put. Uh, it's a very useful way to uh, uh, a useful way to do it. So now that we've done that, uh, and now that we we realize the reason why a covered call is equal to a cash secured put, we can move forward in the next lecture and um, round out this this section of the course by talking about cash secured puts.